Russian Speaks. I'm Elena, your host, and joining us today, Mary Kruger. A new Bedford author, my friend and former colleague, a cat lover, and an avid knitter, and we are going to talk about writing. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. Hi, Elena. Nice to see you, too. Mary, I was so lucky to meet you and to have an opportunity work, to work with you. And I know I always liked talking to you and asking questions. So let's get started with my questions again. <laughs> sure. Okay. So um, I know that you published your first book in 1999, yes? 89. 89. Yes. 1989. Okay, I'm sorry. And no problem. When did you start to write? I was four years old. Oh. <laughs> well, could I mean, could I you write? <laughs> no, no, I could not. I wasn't writing in the sense of picking up a pen, but I was making up stories already. Um, mm. I'd make them up when I was in bed trying to go to sleep at night. Mm. And I did that for a number of years. Like I still do it. Um, but it wasn't until I was a teenager I started writing them down. Oh, okay, so it's when you were a teenager. But yes. when you, you were a teenager, it was just, you, you already did have, a, did have a dream to be an author or no? Well, yeah, I wanted to write. I, I knew I wanted to write and I knew I wanted to see my books published. Oh. Um, but who knows what they're going to do at like 14, 15. Yes. I, I, I mean, I knew college was also coming up. I knew I'd probably have to get a job. And, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. But um, writing wasn't a choice. It isn't even now a choice. It's something that's in me. And it's something I have to do. Okay. So I know that you have written mysteries, novels, and romances. Right. My question is, what genre is easier or maybe more difficult to write? In, in which one? And maybe which one takes longer time? Which one you like more? And like all of these questions. And what's the difference between those genres? All right. Romances are, have a little more emphasis on the characters and the emotions. Mm -hmm. And I have an easier time creating characters than doing plots. So I find romances easier. Okay. Mysteries, of course, you still have to have strong characters in mysteries, but there's more emphasis on the plot because you have to know how the mystery is going to be resolved and you have to know where you're going to put the clues along the way. So Mysteries require a good bit of plotting and a good bit of thinking about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And novels but, probably just a, a story. Well, mm -hmm. I haven't written a straight novel. It's just romances and, and mysteries. Ah. Okay. Um, so talking about writing, when you said about plot and all of these things, when you decide to write a book, do you know the whole scenario already or you write the first chapter? No? <laughs> I, I kind of see the whole thing, but there's very few specifics except the beginning. I, um, I know the ending. Uh, okay. I know, <laughs> well, I already, I, I know the lovers are going to get together. I know the murderer is going to be caught. Um, and if I have some scenes in mind, I kind of see those in my head, but I don't know a lot of the in-between stuff. Uh, I have to sit down and figure that out. I can't, I have tried sitting down with a, and just writing from the beginning without doing any planning. Mm -hmm. And the story goes crazy. It goes all over the place. I have to have a plan. So you still need to have a plan. I, you yeah. need an idea and a plan. So where do you get your ideas from? Oh, ideas come from everywhere. Um, 
I'm so used to trying to, to find them now that trying to think I could spot an idea in this house right now. I can't. I could, but I'm not going to tell you because it, it, it reveals what a terrible housekeeper I am. Um, I have had ideas from dreams. I've had them from songs. Hmm. I've had someone quoted once quoted a line of poetry to me and I went, hmm. And I wrote a book from that. Um, you know, to me, I do not have imagination at all. So my ideas that like only what's going on with me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I cannot create stories. <laughs> So to me, it's kind of very plain. Um, I have another question about ideas. What about ideas for the titles? This is my real pain, just pain, pain, because it must be short, it must be informative, it must be descriptive, and maybe even attractive. So it's like, how to get it? Do you have a, like a trick how to create titles for your books? No, no. <laughs> no. Um, sometimes. I, the title will be there. The title perfect for the book. The first book was Sabrina. That was my title. They, I kept it. They kept it. The next book, I think my working title was Sarah's Choice. I hate this title. Um, can't think of it. They titled it. Company titled it. A Gentleman's Desire. It's 30 years and it still embarrasses me a little. Um, I had one of my mysteries. I wanted to title a stitch in crime. And the, the editor said, no, that's not specific enough. It could be sewing. It could be this. It could be the other. And I was working at Lawler at the time. So I had everybody involved in, in the title on that one. And and what's, what did they, I don't remember what they called it. It was, you had the books. Nick Young Die Fast. Yes, yes, I remember. I, I read the book, I liked it a lot. It's like, Thank it's you. something what I understand, like needing and small city, or it was a town. So it was kind of, but I didn't know that you worked at Lola at the time. Yeah, I did. I worked there for two, for two years. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was a part-timer. Ah. Okay, so I see. Um, I know that some of your books published under different name, different last name. What right. is the like? Was there a purpose for this, or can you tell? When or I you saw, cannot. When I saw my first one, they asked me to take a pseudonym, a pen name, and they said Mary Kruger was wasn't dramatic enough I think they meant it was too ethnic and they couldn't say it but that was also common practice in the romance publishing industry at the time so mm -hmm. I just took a phone book and I wanted to keep my initials and I went down the list of names until I came to one I liked and I came up with Mary Kingsley so did they give you a list of no I didn't no, no it was did. my choice it was my choice um so that was with all the romances with that publisher. And when I went to a different publisher for romances, different kind of romance, my name was known, so I kept it. Mm. Uh, and I was going to keep it for the mysteries, but the editor said, no, the two audiences don't really intersect. So I went with my own name for it. So do you want to say that you do have Three. So how many names do you have? You publish two. under two. Two. Mary okay. Kingsley for romances, Mary Kruger for mysteries. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was like, maybe I don't know, maybe it's something else. <laughs> no, that's it. That's more than enough. Would you advise the other authors to use pseudonyms too or no? I think probably most authors would want to go out under their own name. Um, I would have, if I could have, could have, I would have gone under my own name. And sometimes people will do it for reasons of privacy mm -hmm. or they might do it for a reason 
the same reason I did. They're going to write a different genre and they wanted different personalities, so to speak, being that author. But I would say in most cases, no, stay with your own name. Mm -hmm. um, if you go back to, to questions about the process of the writing, I'm a blogger, so I have a few, like, um, I would say, parts of the process. I need to get an idea, I need to do researching, I need to write, and I need to publish. So you probably have about the same. Which yes, very part, similar. Uh -huh, okay, which part of the process do you like more? The actual writing. Actual writing. The actual writing of it. But I like all of it. Mm -hmm. I like... Um, you want me to tell you how I how I write the book? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I have the initial idea. Mm -hmm. And I write longhand, which is unusual these days, but mm -hmm. I seem to think better with a pen in my hand. I agree. And it has to, it has to be a, a black stick pen and narrow lined paper. So I will write notes, pages and pages of notes, ideas about characters, ideas about the story, the the setting. Mm -hmm. Um and a lot of times just, okay, what do I do now? Is will, will be one of the notes because I, I was like, I like, what do I do now? I don't know what to do next. Um, I have to have a um, an outline. So I have to have the whole thing laid out scene by scene. And I do that on index cards. And once I have my scenes all set, then I can actually start the writing. I usually, with my notes, I usually have different things written, but you have to get things in the right order. So you've got the setup, you've got the story, you've got the mm -hmm. tying up the loose ends. You have what's called rising and falling action. So you're, you're trying to, see if I can kind of illustrate, the story goes up to a point it goes down and then it goes up again and it goes down. You, you, um, it looks like a graph that constantly goes up until mm. you get to the point and then it comes down to the end. It's awesome. rising, rising tension, especially in a mystery, you need rising tension. You need that feeling of the suspense building and building and building. I mean, as a reader, you know there's going to be a happy ending one way or another, but you want things to look black for the people. A good, a lot of the time, you just want you want to keep your author, your readers in suspense. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because when I write, I also need to write something like some notes, and then I'm thinking which one I will like, what paragraph I will put first, which one will go like later, and how to make it more interesting and more intri intriguing. Probably yes. You're you're doing the same thing. Yeah, you're doing it sort of an intuitive way of doing it. But my favorite part is to click a publish button. <laughs> it's like, oh, now it's like, oh, I'm happy now. I clicked the publish button. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, of course, my, all my books, have, almost all my books, I should say, have been historical. So there's a good deal of research involved with that. Yes. A yes. lot of research. And Fortunately, I like doing that. Um, I, I've, I like that. I enjoy that kind of thing. Yes. I, I do some before I start and then I start getting antsy to write. So I actually add a lot after I've written the first draft. I add the details in and I go through about six drafts altogether, mm -hmm. editing. Um, Un until it's, I feel that it's polished enough. And even then afterwards, I always find things that I could fix. Yes. Sometimes people say, don't go back to read your book when it's already published, because you always will try yeah. to find something what you could, what you could improve. <laughs> I've never reread one of my books. Great. <laughs> I told myself the story the first time through. I never reread them. I can't approach them the way a reader would okay it sounds a little bit like an advice for 
to the others also. But do you have one like more advices for the others? Well, for somebody who's just starting out mm -hmm. and they may even be thinking about publishing already when you're just starting out, don't think about that yet. Just, just write, mm -hmm. just sit down, get your words out, get, get your characters out into the world. And really the only way you're going to learn it is by doing it. But there are other ways to learn. There's a wealth of information out there. It's, um, my source was always books, books about writing. Now there's so much on the internet. There's so much advice. And the same about publishing. Um, publishing is a lot different than it was when I started. So there were no electronic books back then. It, it wasn't easy. It's harder now because publishers have gone out of business. Mm -hmm. And the, the business of publishing is to make money. And yeah. paper books are expensive to produce. Mm -hmm. So they're very, very picky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, way back when, like back in the 20s and the 30s, 1920s, 1930s, you'd read stories of authors who worked for their, with their editors and the editors would really polish the book up for them. Practically, it almost sounded like they practically wrote the book. They don't do that. They can't do it. They don't have the time. The book has to be print ready when you submit it. Okay. So what I suggest to people and this kind of lands with the thud most of the time, is to go with electronic publishing, publish it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I know the allure of seeing your book in print in a bookstore. I, I, every author wants that. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, it is a, it's a heck of a feeling, it really is. Um, but electronic publishing gives you more control over the finished product. Plus, you make more money. Mm -hmm. You also have to do more work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's trade-offs with everything. I, I prefer it. But then again, as I said, I've seen my book on the shelf, so I don't have to have that again. I, I, I'd rather, I want the book out to as many people as possible, and I like the money. Okay, I see. So how many books have you written? I, I how many? 19. No, it was more. No, you might have seen different editions. It's 19 and <sighs> four novellas that were printed in anthologies. So 23 volumes altogether. Okay. 19 full length, four short. Okay, because I was trying to count on, on the website, like <laughs> counting, I was counting 18 and then probably six, but you said it's like all to, okay. Okay. You said 19. I think you, you probably think 19 full length novels, uh, five mysteries, 14 romances, mm -hmm. uh, 11, uh, 11 of the romances were what's called Regency romances. It was a, not a genre that exists anymore. A very specific type of book and historical novel, and then three historical romances. And then the five mysteries. Okay. So um, another question is what we actually have to say necessarily. Where can readers get your books? Um, the best bet now is to go to a place like Amazon or Barnes and Noble online. I do have not all of my books have been re-released as ebooks. So but... Barnes and Noble have something online? Oh yeah, really? barnesandnoble.com. Mm. Um, there's also a site called Smashwords. Which, Never heard of it. Okay. It's all right, but they, they do electronic publishing. They were one of the first ones to do it way mm -hmm. back when. Um, Amazon's the giant. Yeah, Amazon, of course. Okay. Okay, Maria, we have just a couple of minutes left. And okay. I really would like, want, not would like, like want to thank you for this interesting conversation. Thank you for accepting my invitation and 
taking your time talking to me once again. And, you know, I really miss talking to you. I miss talking to you too, Elena. I do. Um, I like, like we said at the beginning, how you like to talk to me. And I feel the same way about you. I feel lucky to have you in my life too. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome, Elena. This was Elena.